Being um, sedated in what? During the dying process. What is our opinion of being sedated well, you during You know more about that. Right. I, all I know is during the birth process, I wanted to be sedated. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> But, but, okay. but uh, about the dying, I don't know. It depends on how Okay, it's going. so once again, we're talking about karma here. If I had my hip replaced and I, wa I, I wanted to be awake, I mean, certainly I had a block, so I wasn't feeling a lot of pain, but I, f I figured this is going to be interesting. You know, a light construction zone, bone dust flying around, and cauterizing flesh and things like that, that this would be an interesting thing to be up there for. What was this operation? Hip replacement. Oh, my God. Did you have a beer? Did I have a beer? A beer. <laughs> they actually had a curtain up so you couldn't see. But, the, but the, the, the point to your question is if you can be present without resistance, why not be present? If, however, the pain is such that you can't deal with it and you are resisting and contracting and creating the karma of, oh, I can't take this, take some drugs. <laughs> Nothing wrong with taking some drugs. <laughs> uh, at the same time, as we talked about right before lunch today, uh, we talked about the pain meditation and that many people, myself certainly included, learn a lot about not automatically reacting to the unpleasant through my relationship with physically unpleasant sensations, mm -hmm. which is much easier and more direct than trying to deal with unpleasant emotions or thoughts because they're much more seductive and confusing. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's a whole spectrum here of how severe the pain is. And I would encourage everyone to explore the possibility of being with unpleasant sensation and seeing if you can relax, if you can soften, if you can have an open heart. It's just an unpleasant sensation. When you're dying, it might be really super unpleasant. We don't know. And if every time something unpleasant arises, you go, I can't deal with this, you are setting yourself up for potential trouble. Okay, uh, at the same time, if, if the pain is so severe, like in childbirth or whatever it might happen to be, then uh, of course, take the sedation so that you can be present as much as possible. The the the, the uh, analgesic will allow. Uh, let me give you just two examples. When when Stan Groff was uh, first here in America, the National Institutes of Health funded him to do an, an experiment where they were giving a low dose of. LSD to terminal, can to terminal cancer patients, quote unquote, as a psychotherapeutic way of dealing with fear of pain. 100 micrograms LSD hospital setting. And they found that this was very successful until the government decided they didn't want right. to be in the job of pushing psychedelics. <laughs> so they cut the experiment. But what they found that really surprised them was because to be in the experiment, you had to have quote unquote terminal cancer, it meant that a lot of these people had a lot of pain. This was back in the dark ages when hospice wasn't as good as titrating pain medication. And what they found that surprised them was that many of these people after their psychedelic sessions experienced a significant reduction in the need for pain medication, yet LSD has absolutely no pain relieving properties. Ha ha, what is that about? Well, if I think that I'm five feet, eight inches tall, and I weigh 170 pounds, and there's X amount of pain bouncing around inside of me, that can be a really big problem. If I have an, exper an experience that leads me to believe I'm the whole universe, that same amount of pain can be bouncing around, what's the big deal? <laughs> I'm the whole universe, <clears throat> right? Right. So how big are you? Who are you? Who's, I mean, Stephen Levine says, who dies? Well, who experiences the pain? They've done other experiments where people who were taking massive amounts of morphine for uh, pain relief were instead given a small amount of morphine in conjunction with a small amount of an antidepressant and a small amount of a muscle relaxant. And it was found that many of these patients could do just as well and not be heavily sedated. Mm -hmm. And if you think about it, the antidepressant and the muscle relaxant are a chemical 
equivalent sort of of the pain medication. It's helping you relax, to be spacious, to not be resistant. And then the person didn't need this massive amount of mm -hmm. opiates. They just needed a little bit. One final could story. Add a little acid on top of that, and they probably would have been recovered. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> a little acid. Add a little acid yeah, on there top you of it. They, they would have <laughs> levitated. <laughs> so when I just one final little story. When when I had my hip replaced, uh, there was a half hour period where the the uh, operative analgesic wore off, and the post-operative uh, anesthetic had not taken effect. So for half an hour the largest muscle of my body, my butt muscle, had been cut through, and I was in the most intense pain I could imagine. And I was in ecstasy. There was no possibility of being distracted or thinking about it. It was just me making love with the sensations. It was just like there was nothing but this red-hot pain going on. <laughs> I did have I did have the big advantage that I knew it was going to be done really soon. Oh, that's. Uh... <laughs> I got to talk to you <laughs> later. Okay. Somebody had their hand up over here, Susan. And then. 